Grand Teton National Park, Part 3, The History of the Park Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park has an extensive history of geology, wildlife, and human exploration. The beauty of the park's geology, as well as the flora and fauna, has drawn humans to it for thousands of years, and with relatively recent advancements in science, humans have been able to document just how it all came together. The oldest rocks found in the park date back to 2.7 billion years ago, making them some of the oldest rocks in the United States. As discussed in Part 1 of the Grand Teton National Park miniseries, the area went through many stages of rock shifting. Approximately 541 million years ago, shallow water engulfed the park in the surrounding area, creating sedimentary rocks which are now seen in the valleys and along the shores of lakes and rivers in the park. The Teton Mountain Range started forming around 9 to 6 million years ago, part of the Greater Rocky Mountain Range. As a result of this, some rock was displaced 30,000 feet. Conglomerate rocks were lifted up from underground and brought up to the surface. Approximately 250,000 years ago, glaciers moved over northern and North America, covering millions of square miles of land, among it the territory of Grand Teton National Park. Glaciers up to 2,000 feet thick carved the lakes and mountains of the area, and most of the glaciers melted approximately 100,000 years ago. After the last stray glaciers melted 14,000 years ago, primitive humans came to the park area. These Paleo-Indians lived in temporary huts, as they would usually move to warmer climates during the winter. However, during the summer they hunted, fished, and gathered food from the vast wilderness of the parks. The first natives to reside in the park for the entire duration of the year came into the park around 8,000 years ago. These residents had more complex tools, such as atlals to hunt and soapstone bowls for eating. Later, the bow and arrow replaced the atlal. American explorers first entered the area in the 1810s, looking for a route from the east coast to the Pacific Ocean. John Coulter, an explorer in the Lewis and Clark expedition, departed from Lewis and Clark to explore a more southern route. His route intersected with Shoshone grounds, but he did not leave written accounts of his visits. After John Coulter, fur trappers came to the area looking for beavers, as the descriptions of the land included many wetlands. Numerous mountain men came to the area and trapped the numerous lakes and rivers of the park, mostly in Jackson Hole. Jackson Hole came to be known as Jackson Hole after one of the most famous fur trappers residing in the area. In 1860, the first government expedition to Jackson Hole was led by Captain W. F. Reynolds along with mountain man Jim Bridger. The expedition was created to analyze the area for mineral or agricultural wealth, but after finding little mineral wealth, and almost no agricultural wealth, the expedition left Jackson Hole. Many more expeditions mapped and analyzed the land after the Reynolds expedition, such as the Hayden expedition which not only passed into Jackson Hole, but also ascended the peak of the Grand Teton and mapped their route. In the 1880s, permanent residents began moving into Jackson Hole in search of cattle ranching, as the soil allowed hay to be cultivated easily. However, the long winters meant that hay would be much harder to grow, and an agricultural depression worsened the deal. Instead, mountain men realized that dude ranching would be much more profitable as rich Easterners would pay large sums of money for lodging and food in Jackson Hole. Dude ranching quickly spread as new ranches were made and old ones were renovated and tourism to the area increased. Towns were established in Jackson Hole as well. In 1872, Yellowstone National Park just north of Grand Teton, was established, preserving part of the western beauty of Wyoming. Some people wanted to expand the park up to the peak of Grand Teton, and meetings were held to decide how to settle the issue. Jackson Hole ranchers were opposed to expanding the park, but instead wanted to make another separate national park. Horace Albright, the superintendent of Yellowstone National Park, toured Jackson Hole with John Rockefeller Jr., who liked the mountain beauty and decided to acquire some land in Jackson Hole. In 20 years, he bought 35,000 acres of land in the area. He intended to give the land to the park in the 1940s. In 1929, Grand Teton National Park was created, at first only 96,000 acres in area. In 1930, Rockefeller's plan to give land over to the National Park was revealed, 
and the Snake River Land Company's holdings were put in limbo, meaning Rockefeller could not do anything with the land he had acquired. The President of the United States set aside the land from the Snake River Land Company that Rockefeller had purchased and turned it into a national monument. Finally, in 1950, the monument, the national park, and the nearby national forest were combined into Grand Teton National Park, preserving its natural resources. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, if you enjoyed it, leave a like or favorite, you could share it with your friends, or you could even subscribe for more videos. If you didn't see the first and second videos in the Grand Teton National Park miniseries, I suggest watching them, and check out the National Parks playlist on the channel to learn more about National Parks.